and welcome to another Board Crazy Review. My name is D. I am joined, as ever, by... I'm Graham. Yes, he is. And I am Will. He's still here. I, I honestly was on the... Yeah. I was like, I don't know. He didn't disappear again. We're reviewing Aaron Middle like Age smoke today. Bomb. <laughs> He's just gone. <laughs> Guys, what are we playing today? What are we reviewing today? We are reviewing Aaron Medieval Age. Yes, we are. Before we do that, we're going to run a little introduction to the game from our own gameplay video, which you can also watch if you haven't seen that yet, uh, so that you have a little understanding of how the game works if you are coming in fresh. So here that goes. Cool. Era Medieval Age is a game for one to four players, designed by Matt Leacock and published by Eckert Spiele. In this game, each player is a lord in control of their own domain, and they're tasked with collecting resources and using them to build the most prosperous city. Each player starts the game with a small selection of resources, as well as three yellow peasant dice and one gray noble die. Players can earn additional dice, which represent different types of citizens throughout the game, by building certain structures. Players also start the game with a keep, which is placed in the very center of their domain, and a small number of other buildings and walls, which they place secretly in their domain however they like. The game is played over a series of rounds that are comprised of six steps. First, players roll all of their dice behind their screens and may then re-roll any dice of their choosing up to two more times, except for those that show a skull symbol, which must be set aside. Once this is done, players next collect any resources shown on their dice by moving the corresponding pegs on their boards. Once resources are collected, players must feed their populations by subtracting one food for each of their dice. If the player doesn't have enough food for their entire population, they must advance their disaster peg once for each unfed die. Speaking of disasters, they come next. The number of skull icons a player rolls determines what kind of disaster they cause. Most disasters are harmful to the player who caused them, causing them to lose resources or even buildings. But some of them are harmful to opponents instead. Once these are taken care of, players may then build once for each hammer icon they rolled. Players may build walls or buildings and then add them to their domain by simply paying the required resource cost. The final phase of every round is extortion. Players' gray noble dice may show a certain number of swords, and players may demand a resource from all opponents who rolled fewer swords. Sword icons can be ignored by an equal or greater number of shield icons, or a player may simply refuse and instead advance their disaster peg two spaces. Play continues like this until the game's end. The final round is triggered once the supply of a certain number of building types has been exhausted. This number is determined by the player count. Once the final round is over, players add up their scores. Players earn points for each building, including double points for buildings that are walled in. Additional points are earned for accumulating culture, as well as bonus points provided by certain building types, and 10 points for having the greatest amount of walled area. Players will lose points, however, for each advancement they've made on their disaster track. Naturally, the player whose domain is worth the most points wins the game. Here we go, Era of Medieval Age. A game for one to four players. Yeah, designed by Matt, Le Matt Leacock and uh, yes. published by Eggerspieler. We already mentioned this in the intro, but I just wanted to reiterate the player count. All right, <laughs> So we played this at two, three, and four player counts. So, I, yes. I, as we always do with these reviews, I guess we just talk about the gameplay first, some of the stuff we enjoyed. So I think this game is all about give and take, I think it's fair to say. I think it's one of the most compelling parts of playing this game. Everything you do is beneficial, but it always, pretty much always means you can't do something else. There's a bunch of different strategies, and you know, yeah. they all kind of, there's a good balance to them all. You know, you can do a thing where you try to collect a bunch of dice, so you can do more on your turn, but if you do that, you have to feed more on your turn. And if you don't get enough food, you're gonna start losing points towards the end because people mm -hmm. are starving, you know? And you know, you can build walls, so which costs you stone, and you need walls. But again, that stone, you can use that elsewhere. So part of this game is just, it's a puzzle that I enjoy figuring out. I don't do it very well, typically, but I enjoy, I enjoy the uh, trying to play the perfect game of this. What's interesting about this game is it's more, I feel like it's more like, the risk reward system is very balanced and you get the higher the risks you take, mm -hmm. The higher the reward you have, but it's very, you know, it's like you could focus on trying to build the biggest city and get tons of buildings inside your walls, but if you come out at the end and you're even just one tiny wall short, you're kind of ruined your whole strategy. And yeah, especially, especially if everyone, everyone else has completed yeah. theirs and got double points and you're left yeah. mm -hmm. opened. What I like about the give and take and what's 
you already kind of uh, hinted at is that it allows for a plethora of different you know play styles and strategies. Um, you know, you already said you can go for like a more of a high risk, high like you know high dice count style, mm -hmm. which will get you more coming in. But you're right, you you would have then you have that problem where you know you can't feed them. It also it fits in thematically. Yeah, the game. With, if you're building a city, the bigger it's going to get, the more food and, and resources you will need to fuel it. So I liked all of that. It doesn't hammer you over the head with the theme. But does do small little things like that, I think, are mm -hmm. you know, well thought out in terms of incorporating it, like the feeding. You're doing a medieval city, bad stuff's probably going to happen. People might get sick, you know, you might get attacked, yada, yada, yada. I just... Once you play the game a lot, those little theme elements come out more and more. Mm -hmm. And like you said, at first, it just kind of feels like, oh, we could slap any theme to this. But I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, and actually, Will was the one that really got me thinking about this point is that the way the game is designed is to make you try to build a medieval city. Yeah. The farm should be on the outskirts of your land. They take up a ton of space. It mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense to build them in your city walls. And that's where also the scorched earth tiles come into play, because mm -hmm. if you're getting a lot of scorched earth, it's going to take up space and take away space from your farms. Yeah. Um, so that part of the theme and those little things that start to pop up um, as you're playing the game, I think, really add a layer to this that puts it maybe a level above some other games we've played of, si of a similar style. Or even even the thought in the the dice that you choose, like the dice that come to the the townhouses versus the keeps versus the I don't know if I what all the churches and stuff. They're yeah. thematically correct in what you would, you know. There's even a political commentary a little bit to the game that I think is also appropriate for the time period, because the gray dice are called noble dice mm -hmm. and the yellow dice are called peasant dice. And what do the noble dice do? They generally either get you like market goods, culture. Or you can mm. use them to steal goods from other people, and those goods are produced by the peasants. So, in in, in essence, the game is maintaining that like idea of the noble and the and the and the religious orders have more money and power, and the peasants just work for them. Mm -hmm. and it's really cool. Uh, I, I do like the the uh, the pressure luck aspect, especially with the disasters. I think they often is some of the most uh, exciting roles of the game because uh, mm -hmm. there are some disasters where you harm your opponents instead of yourself, specifically when you have three or five dice. So in situations where you have, like, two dice that show skulls, like, that's not good if you've got, like, clustered buildings and sure. whatnot. So you've got maybe two dice you have in one roll. Right. You could have a situation where you're either going, you could either cause your opponents to scorch, you could lose a building yourself if you roll two skulls. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of fun. The, the pressure rock in general is really good, you know, getting those three rolls to do as, you know. Yeah, I, I actually like, I typically don't, like, dice being so heavily involved in a game mm -hmm. but it's actually it's done really well here it's not i don't feel like you hurt yourself enough for it to become like obvious and annoying it happens and you're like but it's usually mitigated throughout the game because there's enough good on the dice that you're typically gonna have it mm. but puts you in a situation where you're like okay i think this time i am gonna risk it like i can push my luck a little bit here i've i've you know i've Played it pretty safe up to this point, and I need to. Uh, yeah, it is. It's I. I so I, I do like the. I dice. do. I mean, I, I. I do. I. I. I'm, I'm not. In, I'm not totally uh, in love with the dice. Um, as much as I do enjoy the the, the uh, in the moment excitement they can provide, I, I feel like there are times where it feels like the players are too uh, at the mercy of them mm -hmm. in this game. Because uh, I feel like this is a game that encourages strategy in the way it's designed a lot. Uh, and like in different strategies, and and I mean like you you, you did say it's always beneficial. Every die, even like the bad ones, have something to offer you. Mm. I just feel like sometimes the players have to sort of they they have to go with the dice instead of going with what they might think is best. Well, I mean, I I, get, I don't know if I disagree, but I just interpret it differently. I think that the game is telling you have a strategy, but be really flexible. You know, like don't. Don't have a. You can have a broader strategy, but don't have specific strategies because the dice might guide you a different way. I personally get a lot of enjoyment out of letting the dice be my guide. So I guess it's just a point of view. If you like to have a lot more control and like assert your control over everything, uh -huh. uh, and you want to have specific buildings and get them in nice little tight spaces, and you designed your grid a certain way, yeah, that might annoy you. But for me, I, I just like no. Yeah, going I, with I don't the think it's a problem. Like uh, like early on in the game, I don't mind. I don't go into this game with a specific strategy. I kind of you know start yeah. and see what I got. But like it's one of these things where you might, after your first few buildings, you might start building a strategy. Like you, you might have a, a some churches mm -hmm. down. Like okay, I'm going to go for the university or whatever. Try to find something like combo to get big points, and the dice might just not allow it. But that's where I, I think that's and kind of ties back to 
the first thing I said is I think the balance between the risk and reward in this game is very well thought out and done in the sense that you may be getting those di dice in the, and so you're like, I'm going to continue this strategy. I'm going to see where I can do with it. And mm -hmm. it, it totally ruins you. Well, you took a high risk and you know what? You're not, mm -hmm. it didn't pay off. But at the end of the game, it still might not completely ruin you, you know, because... You're going to score points in this game. Yeah. It's pretty much guaranteed. Well, it is probably. Guaranteed. Yeah. There is, of course, the possibility you brought up where you just might never roll a build. Well, that was my <laughs> next point. In, in our one gameplay, I... I is technically possible. It's incredibly it, unlikely. But. My, the one thing I, that frustrates me most about yeah. this game is that I don't know... Because building things is how you're going to get points and so putting it up to the fate of your dice roll makes me a little bit nervous yeah. in that if you just somehow get really unlucky with your first even mm -hmm. two or three rolls and you're not getting any building it's going to put you in a, a pretty big hole it depends i would say it depends i think it would be better actually if it happened earlier because if you're in let's say like you're at the point in the and where you have you have sort of a strategy already in place now and you're trying to get that one building and you know that you know you're down to like the last round or two and then you don't get a build i think that's when it'd be the most uh, detrimental because I would say early on when there's no risk of the game ending if you don't roll a hammer the game pretty much guarantees because the way the dice are laid out that that means you're just collecting a ton of resources instead or getting something else you need yes. unless you're uh, getting a ton of culture right. but the chance of that happening on yellow dice well you know what I mean so like you can make up for that and then in, in successive rounds you will probably get they, hammers I mean I disagree with that because in the beginning too. there is a slight aspect of engine building in the sense that you got to get your farms out there and maybe mm -hmm. some um, of the lumber mills out there so that you can start collecting resources so later down that you can start affording some of the other also, I, I think I, that's a key part I of it. I feel like this game sort of has a, a like a, a con consistent flow to it. Like I, I don't like there's a cap on how many resources you can even have so like getting a bunch of ones isn't necessarily beneficial as opposed to what I think is more likely, which is getting some resources and some builds every turn and kind of getting that sort of train going like that. I get what I, you guys are saying. I feel like it's important to have buildings out there to use their, re and their abilities. And you want to have first fact, like, shot at something. and you know. That's yeah. true. That, that also could be a problem is that you could see that specific kind of structure disappearing on you because yeah. you're just not able to build as often. Something I, I, I did want to mention that I... The only thing I'm not... And I'm not entirely sure... How it could be what the right balance of it is, but the 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 pace of the game and the speed of the game and how it almost fell. So with the, the way you, f you when you run out of a certain type of building, that's what trigger starts mm -hmm. triggering the end game. You know, if you the first, you think it's in a four player game or a three player game, it's three building types. Two and three players. Two and three players. Yeah, it's three. three of those and and um, five in a four player game. In a two player game, it definitely felt too short. Every. Play count of this feels different. Yes. Definitely. I agree with you. Two players feels too short. It feels like you get to that last building way too quickly. If you like this game, like I think we all do, yeah. um, like I want to keep playing it a little while at least. I want to build yeah. a big kind of yeah. cool looking city. I don't want to have like four buildings and like a little bit of wall and that's it. You know, exactly. that's kind of disappointing. Four players I think has a similar kind of issue. Where there's because there is that finite number of walls, right. so there's fewer to go around. So you really cannot build anything sprawling. At yeah. all. you have to sort of condense, even if there are more buildings for you to take. But I think I think three is actually my favorite. We played the so ideal far. amount, but yeah. So it just got. I guess I think that that was a little bit awkward. And uh, I want. I am not convinced by these. I don't know how you guys feel. While they are handy, having all the most of the information right. you need on the back there, I don't really feel like they added anything. Nope. And in fact, I think they might have taken away a little bit. Like, first of all, not all they, they they allow for cheating, which I would hope no one here has done. No, but it's definitely possible. So basically, oh, to you do all your rolling behind these screens, oh, yeah. so people you you have to. I trust people are putting aside their skulls and stuff and yeah. not yeah. picking up and re-rolling them just. You know, because there's really no way to know what the other person. Yeah, doing. you just yep. have to, again. It's, it's an honor system when you're playing this game. So play it's, this with people you trust. Yeah, uh, it's not just honor. It's also people understanding the rules. Yeah, like the, you yeah, have to make true. it clear that you have three re rolls, but you, you can't only have two re rolls. That doesn't mean like per die. That means like you can you have to pick up clusters of the dice you want to roll yeah. and roll them. And if you choose not like. You know what I mean? I like that you can keep and do it in waves. Like, I'm going to keep these three, re-roll these. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to, you know, take some of those and put it in a new wave. Mm -hmm. But you can't, yeah, you can't just go like, oh, I didn't like that. Well, I'm going to go take this. Now this is my, you know, still a yeah. second re-roll for these it's three. It's not three rolls no, per no, no, die. No, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. So, 
And if, yeah, if you're playing with someone who forgets the rules, yeah. that could prove So for the most part, these serve to uh, hide the noble dice, which are, mm -hmm. you know, swords and shields and blocking your opponents. But I don't think it's necessary. I mean, you know, it's kind of fun when you reveal it and you see what everyone else has, but I don't know that the game would really lose anything by having that information public to sort of increase the risk-reward thing. You might see someone has two swords. You also have two swords. You got to roll left. You want to try and go for three yeah. or for shields or something like that, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, anything else with the gameplay you guys want to talk about? Nope. Then we can talk about the product mm. a little bit here. Uh, I mean, the components are outstanding, I think. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but the, this is, I think, one of the cooler-looking games we've played. Maybe a little uh, uh, unnecessary with all the decaling you have to put on. The decaling I don't love, <laughs> especially because I'm not good at that kind of thing. So yeah. having, you know, having to put your sure. own stickers. If it's not obvious, the black bits on these are not, those are not printed on. Those are stickers that you stick over the otherwise, uh, there's like little like uh, indentations. Well, but from my understanding, the original, like people who got early copies of this, yeah. there were no stickers in it. And oh. it was it was just the inlet. Oh, wow. Okay. Which is impossible to see. Well, not impossible, impossible. You have it to, is not easy. It's all I, yellow and yellow, so it's, uh, yeah. I think most of these are necessary. I don't know why like they give you an extra sticker for like the yeah, that's kind decoration of and yeah. stuff. But yeah, the numbers and stuff are really. I like that they add the stickers, and even if they are sort of unwieldy, well, saying, it good that been. they have them. It's just I wish yeah. they were just printed like yeah, this. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> something. But yeah. that being said, these are cool. They're awesome. They're great. Yeah, it's yeah. They work, and it all works so well. I had some yeah. real fears that like the buildings wouldn't fit neatly yeah. next to each other or anything like that. There'd be like some overlapping like flaps and stuff. But nope, everything is cut. Perfectly, as far as I can tell, the molds for the buildings are really cool. I don't want to get a bunch out here, but like each type of building has its own unique shape, uh, and again, everything fits yeah. into their um, their holes perfectly. It's very snug. Yep. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it, it is a really, really cool-looking game. Final scores: D. Hold on, Air Medieval Age. This is a game I think at its best. This game is. Hugely strategic, provides a really good puzzle for its players. It's always satisfying in board games to see a plan come to fruition. It's especially satisfying, I think, in a game like this where you're constantly making meaningful decisions. It, so that makes it a little bit frustrating for me sometimes where, where the game, again, is so reliant on getting the right dice rolls at the right time. I, think I still I really like this game. You, like you just mentioned, it's really replayable. Um, and it, it does work with different player counts. You just might have to you know, finagle with it a little bit to get it to your liking. But for the most part, I do think this is a very cool, very fun game that I will gladly take off the shelf a bunch. I'm going to give this four stars out of five. I mean, you know me, I'm not shy about saying dice can piss me off. And uh, this is definitely one of the better dice games that I've played. Um, yep, up there with Battlefield 4. Sorry. What? what? It's really not much more I can add. I mean, he said it all. If he said it all, then what's your thumb rating? I'm giving it two thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two thumbs, wow. Highest marks, because he only has two thumbs. The game's fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have much else to say. All right, I, great. Uh, I, sure. The dice stuff doesn't bother me. I, I like the, uh, I love, I just love them when you just don't know what you're going to get. And I like that this game gives me that every round. And I also like that the, uh, flex the, the flexibility you have to have. Uh, I'm not very flexible in real life. So games that allow me to be metaphorically or symbolically yeah. flexible uh, excite me. Sure. So I'm going to give this game an A. A. Hey. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. No minus, no plus. Okay, A. I'm going to give it an A. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it an A. Wow. wow. I like it. Really like this. I don't like it. Your, that's your, is that your highest? No. I've given other A's. You've given other A's. I, I was on the edge plus. there. I thought about A minus for a second. I was like, you know what? No, it's not fair. I love I love playing the game. And that's really all that matters at the end of the day. Because you love surprises. Yeah. You love going to the doctor's office, getting a physical. You don't know what's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> what disease do I have this time? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't care if it's good or bad, as long as it's a surprise. Your blood pressure is 240 over 240. We don't know how that's possible. We don't even know what that means, really. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please like, comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. You can also click the notification bell. And you can check out our social media. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are all linked to below if you want to follow us on any of those. And you can come back Friday uh, for our next gameplay video. I think that's going to do it, guys for this here review. Yep, should we say goodbye? Graham and I have been waiting, so yeah. I wonder if the viewers can ever tell if like, my tolerance for being between you two is mm. just 
gone by the end of these. You should watch the Fallout video if you want to see Graham's tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> to, like disappear. <laughs> Or Deep Sea Adventure. That disappeared. Uh, <laughs> but, well, Deep Sea Adventure is short. So that That's one true. Is, like, yeah, that was, yeah, Fallout, yeah. you can see it disappear around the 10 minute mark. <laughs> Just. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> see you next time.